All right, I'm here at day two uh, at AWS reInvent uh, 2023 with one and only Chris Morgan, uh, who looks after the AI at Vast and uh, the GTM program. That's what you're running here. Uh, first of all, welcome to the Ravid Show. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Awesome. I know you, uh, like, audience know you pretty well uh, from your previous. Uh, you know, uh, background, um, Chris, uh, but I'm pretty sure they would also want to learn a little more about your responsibilities at Vast and what do you do. Uh, can you share a little about that? Sure, I joined Vast about nine months ago. Nice. And originally I came over to do kind of general go-to-market uh, strategy work and we decided as AI started to really happen for the company for me to nice. focus on that. It's one of the fastest growing parts of our business. Yeah. Um, it's becoming a significant portion of our revenue. Yeah. And so it was the right it was the right time to spend a lot of time and effort growing the business uh, internally so that we can get out there and do what we need to do for our customers. This is awesome. In terms of, if uh, I know this is the first uh, reinvent for Vast. It is. If I'm not wrong, and uh, I'm pretty sure the folks would love to know a little about the partnership that you have with AWS and uh, what. How does it actually help the customers? Yeah, so a couple things. So this is our first visit here to, uh, for, to AWS yeah. reInvent. Yep. Uh, we have a very small presence now, and this is kind of like uh, an expo exploratory you know, kind of visit. Yep. Um, we're just starting to bring products to market that are going to run on uh, AWS Marketplace. Amazing, on top of yep. three. The main reason that is customer demand. Customers have a lot of data sitting up here in the Amazon cloud. Yep. And especially around AI, a lot of that data needs to be you know, put into a hybrid architecture with what we do for our customers on-prem. Yep. So very much like you see other folks doing it, but we're doing it in our very vast way. Okay, yeah, the vast way, I like it, awesome. Uh, and I know, uh, you know, vast has made a lot of noise recently with uh, emerging AI clouds like Cori, Lambda, and Core 42. Uh, what is it about your platform that uh, these emerging AI as you know, uh, uh, climbing aboard Vast? Uh, yeah. Would you like to share a little about that? Yeah, you know, Vast has this really great uh, architecture where we've redesigned essentially the, how storage works. So we're the exact opposite of Hadoop, essentially. Mm -hmm. right? so, our, so our ability to you know share everything and our data architecture. Yep allows us to do a couple things that are really important to these service providers. Yep. The first is, we have all the performance in the world that you need to train an LLM. So okay. we're one of only four platforms to certify by NVIDIA for SuperPod. That's huge. And that certification process is very, very rigorous on the performance to be able to feed the GPUs the data they need so yep. there's no slowdown yep. in that very expensive resource. So if you want to think about it, there's one access for, for data management around, around AI that says you got to be performant. The other access for service providers is that you have to have all the management features you need. I need multi-tenancy, I need QoS, I need security, I need all that kind of classic you know, suite right. of tools in order to manage it for managing my customers if I'm a service provider. Yeah. Vast is the only platform that has both of those elements. Wow. So traditional parallel file systems, Lustre, and mm -hmm. GFS, those systems do not have the manageability, they don't have the uptime, they don't have any of that kind of build a business out of it because yeah. they're really yeah. academic systems. They were built for academic high performance computing. We have both sides of that equation. It makes it very, very successful for our customers to build a business on top of it. Yeah, no, I love it. And uh, just on that front itself, uh, because I know you, like we were talking about it off air as well, uh, like everyone's talking about AI in 2024, maybe it's going to be more than what we see right Absolutely. now. Uh, so just a question around that is, what are some emerging AI and data you know, workloads that these data cloud uh, providers uh, are servicing? Would you like to share a little about that? Yeah, so I think 2023 was the, was the year of the model training. You know, this was about, I'm going to get some data, I'm going to train you know, models, yep. and that's only one part of the whole AI journey. Right. So for us at Vast, we look at the entire data pipeline around AI as a, fun as a business function. Mm -hmm. That starts with gathering data, doing an ETL process, presenting that data as a training set to GPUs, coming out with a trained model, and then going off to inference. Okay. Okay. So 24 is going to be about completing that data pipeline. So everybody's right. focused on LLM at 23. Everybody we're talking to now is focused on the on the data train data curation to yeah. inferencing yeah. pipeline. And then the other thing I think it's going to be, be, be huge in 24 
is security. Yeah. So we're starting to see the first kind of hack attacks on LLM models in the wild, on inference going on. Yeah. And I think the whole security question is going to be what we're going to be talking about a year from now here at Reed, I think. Okay, this is pretty interesting and uh, definitely looks very uh, motivating for the community as well. Uh, what you all are doing at Vast. Uh, one quick question around, you know, uh, the architectural bit as well. Would you like to share a little about Wasp's architecture and how is it helping you know customers solving their challenges as well? Yeah. So when when Renan and the team started Bass in 2016, what they wanted to do was a couple things. One is they knew there'd be a long-term transition to flash only. Yeah. So the, we have to we had to end spinning disk. Yeah. That's one piece. The second piece was there's real huge inefficiency in the way a Hadoop file system is built. So a shared nothing file system. Yep. That you have a server and disk in the same box, and then all those servers and disks need to talk to everything else. Yep. There had to be a faster, better way to do this because Renan and the team saw that AI was going to be a massively data intensive process, that those legacy architectures, which this, the youngest of them is 22 years old. Yep. The oldest of them are 35 years old. So clearly those architectures were not designed for the future we're into to coming up on today. Yeah. So as they looked at it, they said, look, first thing is we need to take the state part of this and get that on the flash, low cost flash. Yeah. Okay. On the stateless part of this, we need to put this into containers. Right? This has got to be flexible. And then if we use a, a very high speed MEMB over fabrics network between the two, we can get great performance rates. Yeah. The other piece of magic is in front of that QLC storage tray, is a piece of what we call enterprise fast storage, yep. okay? About 1% of the total storage, but very, very high performance, and basically is a write buffer. Yeah. And that allows us to protect the QLC and get 10 years of life out of those, but also allows us to do all kinds of things around QoS and the rest of the service offerings we are putting into the product. Nice. So the containers allow us to present multi-protocol, we present S3, we present uh, GPU Direct, we present uh, NFS, yeah. So we're very, very flexible natively on the top of this thing, and then we're very, very flexible on how you can now configure how much how much performance do I need for how much storage. So say I'm doing a backup array. I don't need a lot of performance, but I need a lot of storage. Wow. So I have it's quite detailed. Yeah. yeah. So I'm allowed to go and, and break those two things up and play like Legos with them. Yeah. I can pick how much compute I need, yeah. and then how much storage I need, and I can optimize it. Okay. And it allows for great economics with huge data reduction. So yeah, exactly. The cost saving is huge there. Yeah, right? that we can get for something like a backup array, we can be a price competitive with spinning disk with flash. It's amazing. Awesome, I can't wait, and uh, definitely uh, 2024, like we were talking about. Uh, so my last question as yeah. we conclude is obviously around 2024 and uh, what's the big mission for Wast and uh, how are you looking at the AI space? So the first, ASPs, the CSPs? Uh, no, AI space, I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I misunderstood yeah. you. No so uh, first, just grow, if, if my CEO, Brendan, was here, he'd say we're about growth. We're growing very, very quickly. We want to keep that growth up. Yes. AI is going to be a big driver of growth for us in 24. Yeah. Well, it was in 23. It's going to be more so here. Yeah. We solve data problems for AI that nobody else can solve. Nice. And that is really what we're about. Um, it's going to be a significant part of our business in, you know, yeah. in 24. And it's going to fuel us being the fastest growing infrastructure company in the industry. I can't wait. And uh, this is amazing, Chris. And uh, thanks for taking the time out today. I know it's a busy day for you. You've been talking a lot around at uh, places and then uh, it's been a busy booth as well. So uh, folks who are around at AWS can actually uh, come by Wast and uh, even get some cool swag. Yeah. Uh, right? Uh, and have your picture taken yes. with the mastermind. It's so cool. Awesome. Chris, thanks once again for visiting the Robert Show. Definitely looking forward to doing it again. Robbie, nice to meet you and thanks for having me on. Awesome. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you, everyone.